On the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Hey, we're back. Attorney Steve Bondren here. We are on the road again. I'm here driving with Frontline Lisa at the wheel. Yeah, baby. And we're just cruising out, taking a little uh, weekend break here. Get away from all the craziness. So uh, we are back and uh, we're talking in this video about software. Uh, hey, there he is. What's going on? So we are talking today about software audits, and um, this is a big part of our practice, software audits. And um, if you have any questions that pop up, general questions, we cannot give legal advice on these YouTube videos. I know it's a shame. I didn't make up the rules, but they make up those rules. You can't give legal advice to people on um, basically the internet or on a chat room. So, you know, those are the rules. So and people still, for some reason, they still want that legal advice. They ask, they pressure, they call, yeah. they insist, and then they get mad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's true. And so I'm going to give you just a little view of the road as we're terrain. We are in an undisclosed area. And maybe you'll, maybe you'll figure it out if you see one of the road signs. But... Um, at any rate, so we're talking about software audits, and again, this is a big part of our practice. Our firm handles uh, audits with a lot of different companies uh, off the phone with the big wig at Vero. Here's one of the big cam, uh, Cabinet Vision, some of their main... And, you know, people, there's a lot of different things, okay? So if you, if you download software, you will oftentimes find, let's say it's Autodesk or Microsoft, Vero, um, not always, but oftentimes you will find an audit clause. And an audit clause is just a, it's a clause in the contract that says, if we feel like it, we can audit you and you have to comply with the audit, meaning you have to, sometimes they will, they will even say on-site audits, like, like, and people will go, they'll freak out, they'll say, you mean they're going to come to my place of business? And I said, well, you know, we'll probably be able to negotiate that so it's not something that they're coming in on. Um, but, you know, some of the audit clauses will even say that it's, you know, on site. So, and a lot of people don't look. You know, people go online and download software. They click that button that says, I agree. And when they end up doing that, you know, what happens is, you know, truthfully, truthfully you agree to those terms now there's very limited circumstances where you could actually get out of that um, by going to court telling a judge I did you know. come around this little roundabout here in about five minutes and so oy, we're back oh the magic of uh, connectivity here so uh, but anyway so like I said a lot of time these cl audit clauses are going to be deemed enforceable and people are going to be able to so, um, Business Software Alliance. Business Software Alliance is what we call BSA, um, Business Software Alliance. And what they are is a trade group, a trade association for the major software companies. So, like Microsoft and Autodesk are, some, are two of the big ones, Adobe, and there's lots of others. But these are companies that are part of the BSA. The BSA is um, in, located in Washington, D.C., and they're kind of an anti-piracy com uh, license compliance company, and they go and collect money on behalf of these software companies, and they will conduct the audits through their regional firms. Um, they have firms you know, throughout the country, um, about seven or eight of them, that will handle their cases. So. Hey, we're back again. <laughs> we keep going in and out. As you can see, we're up here on the uh, the long and winding road. The long and winding road. So we're just up here. Lots of trees. One of our one of our fun little hangouts we like to go to. And so, um, but yeah. So the BSA through their firms will come and conduct these audits, and they'll want you to get all your dated receipts. They'll want to know what's installed on every laptop computer what's on your networks and if there's infringing software or unlicensed software if you can't match up your licenses then those would be considered shortages and you may be paying hefty fines with the bsa 
I can tell you there's some hefty fines. And many times the BSA is um, informant based. So the informants will be someone either that works at the company, someone that used to work at the company. Sometimes it's a student uh, that was there and didn't get hired and they said, well, I know all the dirt about this company. So in, in essence, kind of like whistleblowers, but they can also seek a reward. And um, some of the companies offer a reward up to a million dollars, I saw on one. And so anyway, these can be you know scary moments for companies. Sometimes the company's on the line. It could be a smaller company with you know 20 to 50 computers. And the damages can be, I mean, let's just say, I think we've seen um, demand letters close to a million dollars. Yep. So um, th these audits are not something to take lightly. Um, that, another one that we do is SIIA audits. That's a software industry information association. And that's a lot of different companies. That's a lot of companies that publish online information and content, the SIIA. So they're out there, they do audits. We also do, um, we also have Autodesk. Autodesk will um, do a lot of audits we do. We're probably, I would say, the number one firm that handles Autodesk. We do quite a few Autodesk audits and that's dealing with co the products like the AutoCAD, the Revit, um, Maya, Inventor. And Autodesk has great products. They have a lot of great products. People love them. They're expensive, they're not cheap, and their infringement cases can be pretty pretty hefty too as well. So um, let me have you take a look at the view. We're coming into a little snow here, so it's pretty cool. Um, at any rate, um, um, so Autodesk is one, Siemens is another, Siemens Product Lifecycle Management. This is another um, expensive software. Siemens has a, quite a variety of products and some expensive, some not, not so expensive, but they will file lawsuits and they will seek to hold parties, many times their engineers, liable for installing software without having a proper license. So that's another big line of, of, of uh, software product that we, that we help business owners, we help individuals, and most of the time we are able to offer a flat rate legal fee. So the exception being is if you're in litigation and usually litigation, uh, I will tell you this about software litigation, um, it's not really usually um, what happens, it's usually if you're if you're able coming, you're not playing playing the game in good faith. That's when you can have problems dealing with these things. Okay, so lots of times, like I said, some people will ask, you know, does hiring an attorney show I'm guilty? Well, and I say, look, we're here to help. We we are here to help. How you doing there today? Who's that? I said, let me. Get my glasses so I can see there. See, somebody said hi. Whoops, I lost you there. So anyway, uh, saw you, said hi. How you doing? Appreciate you watching our channel. But yeah, so um, so software audits, like I said, I mean, when you, what happens is if you get a letter, people will say, you know, should I hire an attorney? Should I not? We offer low, predictable flat rates. So you're not going to be hiring a firm. There are other firms out there, I'm not gonna mention any names, but there are firms out there that will put, they'll say, oh, you know, this is the, this is the, the biggest case that uh, you've ever had. Greetings from Serbia, hey, hey. Um, so, but hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you're guilty. Hiring a lawyer, as from our perspective, is you want somebody to help you. They have lawyers on their end so maybe you should have one on your end. Thank you for following us every day. I really appreciate that. I hope you're a subscriber. We This year we got over our 10,000 subscribers and that was pretty awesome. You know, as I tell people, not too bad for a boring, semi-boring legal channel. I'm just kidding, I don't think it's boring at all. But uh, thank you, I really appreciate that. So, um, but yeah, so, so software audits is a big part of what we do. I love doing them because, you know, the world of software is, is so complex, especially when you get into Microsoft licensing with open licenses and volume licenses. You know, this is the funny thing about um, licensing is that 
you could be over licensed. There are companies for fear of being um, accused of software piracy, they're actually over licensed. And sometimes I wonder if that's what the software companies want by making it so complicated that you, you, know, you don't know what your entitlements are, your software entitlements. So we help companies figure it out. We help you understand your inventory. Uh, we help you through the auditing process. We help make sure there's confidentiality agreement in place so everything is confidential. And we help negotiate the settlement. The big thing about the settlements is, like I said, with a lot of these companies, the settlements are so high that you wouldn't know a good deal from a bad deal. And with us, we have been through the ringer. We have dealt with so many different companies over the years, so many different law firms that, you know, we're not allowed to call ourselves experts because the state bar says that's a no-no. You cannot call yourself an expert. So, um, but, you know, we're pretty good at what we would do, uh, at what we do. And our goal is not to drag it on for six months, not to put three attorneys on the case and see how big we can get the bill. You know, there's nothing worse. Nobody wants a shocking um, legal bill. Let's get back to our scenery here. You guys have seen enough of me. Um, but um, nobody wants that shocking legal bill, Lisa, do they? Nope, they do not. It's, it's the one thing that we do is flat rate fees for these software uh, audits and people appreciate it because they don't know what they're gonna be paying for the settlement. So knowing what they're paying us no hidden fees, no after the fact invoices, that what they pay us up front is all you'll ever pay us to get the case settled, whether it takes us a month or a year and a half. So that's people, our clients love, love the fact, love the flat rates. And we've been doing that for a long time. So yeah, thank you. And we do that a lot in a lot of our different product lines that we serve. So, um, so in regards to here's another issue that pops up sometimes is um, people create, let's say you're, you've got, uh, you've got unlicensed software, you, uh, let's say, uh, and, and there's a difference, you know, there's unlicensed software and there's pirated software, unlicensed software, maybe you can't find the receipts to the BSA, to Autodesk, you know, to these companies, that's unlicensed, that's non-compliance. That means you can't prove your compliance position, your compliance position. So um, that's one thing. Piracy is another. Um, downloading software on torrents, using crack codes, that's a whole nother um, issue that, you know, to me can create even more liability. People finding software online, downloading it using crack codes. Now, the, a question people may have some from time to time is, well, what if we're creating products? What if we're using it and we're um, you know, let's say we're cutting out wood or metal products and that's our business. We're cutting out products using the software. Um, so yeah, that can be a problem as far as damages. There's a call now. Holy cow. <laughs> we'll hold on that one since we're on the road. Um, so, you know, yeah, if you're creating products on unlicensed software, that can be a question of damages. That can be something that you know, when we look at damages in copyright law and these software cases are brought under copyright law because software is copyrighted, okay? Not everybody knows that, but computer code is subject to software. Most of the big companies, all the companies I've mentioned, they, they copyright their products as well as the upgrades, the new versions 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. You know they're all they're all copyrighted products so what happens is when an infringement case is pursued the the party the copyright holder that's seeking infringement they can sue you for one of two things they get their choice oh, beautiful that's a snowball right there that is a snowball everybody busted out where we're going oh boy she gave up our she gave up our lo or lo loca or loca locale so uh beautiful beautiful up here though yeah, let me, whoops, I was going to try to zoom in on that a little bit, but, um, uh, but what happens is, is you're using software that is, they could be seeking statutory damages. If it's willful, they can be seeking statutory damages of 30 to 150,000. Wow. Now you may say, well, that's a lot, you know, that's a whole lot. Yeah, it's a lot. You got to understand who creates these laws, who lobbies for these laws, software companies, music companies, film companies book companies. Copyright is a law with teeth. It has a lot of teeth. So, um, 
you know, so the other thing though, to, to address an issue of what happens if you're creating products with unlicensed software is there's actual damages. The copyright holder can say, you know what? I'd rather pursue actual damages. And you say, well, what's that? Well, you've been using my, my p pirated software and you have sold $2 million worth of widgets with my software. You know, well, you know what? The copyright holder may instead say, I would rather be seeking that $2 million instead of the 150. That doesn't seem so good to me. So that is a risk. So if you're using unlicensed software and creating product, you always have to be cognizant that that is a risk that you could be looking at damages like that, you know, minus the overhead and things like that. I'm not going to go into that right now, but um, that's, you know, kind of software law in, in software audits in a nutshell. And, um, you know, it's, it's important if you get a letter from one of these law firms, so forth and so on, it's important to seek legal advice from an intellectual property firm like ours. Like I said, we do a free consult. We'll tell you the basics in and outs, where you stand, what your options are. And, you know, if you retain us, we have low flat rate fees. And no, it doesn't mean you're guilty because you're hiring someone you're hiring a lawyer, they have lawyers, and you're hiring a lawyer. That's, you know, that that's common sense. In a chess game, you want to be evenly matched. So, you know, that's a very important thing. Well, let me let me make one point. Um, we actually, Frontline Lisi, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, that's me. Another reason why you want to hire a law firm like ours is that when you do settle, that you make sure that you're settling so they cannot come back and say, hey, guess what? We're back again. Example, we had a law firm, gonna be very vague about it, and they handled a case on their own. Excuse me, I'm getting a cold or something. Uh, handled a case on their own, and about a year later, settled the case. A year later, they came back, knocked on the door, and said, hey, guess what? It got another issue, and they said, whoa, whoa, wait a second, we settled with you, and they said no. So. The provision, there was a provision that was not in the settlement agreement and, you know, at a law firm, you would think they would have known that, but they didn't. So another reason you'd hire someone like ourselves is so that you can make sure that if you do pay any type of settlement, whether it's touring stuff or, or software stuff or whatever, that you actually have a ironclad settlement agreement where they cannot come back and get you again. Yeah, again. that's a great point, Frontline Lisi. And, and you know, and I will tell you that the settlements, settlement agreements in this area, they can be very tricky. Um, and I hate to say it, some of the opposing counsel can be very deceptive and try to be tricky. And I'm not going to go into all the details on that. But they're nice to you. So you give them all the all the evidence and then they come down with the hatchet on you yeah yeah that's another one is is you know we just want to work this out you know and the, you know the, oftentimes they'll be on the phone with you you know just tell us where you're at with the licensing we're just here to help out so again those you have to be careful of also now internal audits Microsoft does internal audits Autodesk does internal audits and these may seem very informal you may get an email that says hey we want to just do a friendly little audit there are precautions that could be taken and should be taken. We help clients, again, low flat rate fees to help you through these audits. Again, if they have a legal team on their side, you should have one on your side. Now look at this beautiful view right here. That is what I'm talking about. That is a snowball. So that is beautiful. So we're getting near the end here. Um, there was a question on software that lawyers use to stay organized. And I, I tell you this, um, one of my favorites, which I was recommending to everyone, was Clio. And Clio is an online practice management system that I that I really like. And um, you know, but they recently changed their interface, which is kind of I hate when software companies do this. You're like, I'm hooked on your product, I love your product, and then you go and change the interface on me. And it is, you know, I find it so frustrating. YouTube has recently done this, by the way, where um, I love the YouTube video uh, interface for putting my videos up. And now they have, they're changing to a new creative look. Now that, what I like about Google is they don't just switch it on you. 
they let you push a button so you can go back to the classic view. Well, I will tell you, Clio did that for a long time, you oh, know, okay. but the frustrating part is we've used Clio for probably eight years. And so it's just second nature. Well, now it's completely different where you can't even find certain like to put, I couldn't, it took me 10 minutes to put in a calendar event the other day. So I've called them five or six times and, and they claim the reason they switched is because they're the, um, the infrastructure where they originally wrote the software, it wasn't supported with the new platform or something. But what I realize is they bought a new company and I think they're trying to transition upgrading people into using this new company with Clio, this interface. So they had to have the new platform for this other company to interface, which again, it's, you know, it's an upgrade, but it's an upgrade price wise. So I liked it because it was user friendly. I used to sell CRM software years ago. So I appreciate a user friendly database. And now it's not user friendly to me. So it's so frustrating. So I'm actually contrary to what Steve wants. I'm actually out there looking to see if there's a, an alternative solution that's going to be easy to use. So frustrated. So yeah, so um, but yeah, so that's one way to stay organized is a very good practice management system is a great way keeping a good uh, calendar, personal calendar, hard copy so you can flip through and know the things that you have to do is very important. Um, organizing an outlook. There's uh, there's other things that can be done, but those are some of our favorites. Mod Mayhew's in the house. Mod, we love we love Mod Mayhew. Hey Mod. <laughs> Hey, Mod, what's going on? So, whoa, I got to get you back to this beautiful view. Look at this. So we're coming to our destination here. So we want to thank you for watching our show today. This was on the road again. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Lisa, that's a really horrible rendition. <laughs> that's John Denver at his finest. No, 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 no. Can uh, Who's that? Uh, John Denver, no. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson. It's a great one of our favorites. So, so we are out of here. Um, keep watching our videos if you have any new topics you want to hear. Also, I'm thinking about doing something new where if somebody has a case of fraud and it is in California or Arizona and you have a well-documented case of fraud and it needs some exposure, it needs somebody covering it, you know, Attorney Steve to the rescue is going to be the name of my new videos. Attorney Steve to the rescue. Like so if you have any ideas, especially elders, we love to protect elders here at our, our law firm. Elders are one of the fastest growing segments of society and they are really susceptible to abuse. El financial elder abuse is really what I'm talking about. But at any rate, um, we're going to get running here for the day. We got some more work to do. And uh, again, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a punch that like button. Just, just hit it, it's not gonna kill you. Just punch that like button. Leave me some comments if you have any comments. Otherwise, have an amazing weekend and we will talk to you all again. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Oh, actually, it's a three-day weekend this weekend. President's Day on Monday, so we will be working on Monday, but I'm, a lot of people will be off, so if you have any legal questions or uh, need some advice, we're going to be working on Monday. So give us a call at 877-276-5084. Or find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com. First name in legal service. The first name in legal services. Bye now. <laughs>